as citizens of this world, citizens of this smaller planet, never lose sight of the dangers of, of escalation, the dangers of miscalculation, the danger of not understanding. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Excellencies, fellow participants at the Shangri-La Dialogue 2024, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants, good friends, it is indeed a great honor for me to stand for the third consecutive time in the Shangri-La Dialogue here in Singapore. We gather here as leaders, as policymakers in the defense, security, and political field to engage in meaningful discussions which are crucial for enhancing peace and stability in our connected world. Sometimes we feel reluctant to attend these occasions because there is a danger that we do not communicate honestly and do not interact faithfully. We state our positions and we do not want to listen to opinions of others. However, however today we are in a particularly sensitive moment in history. We are witnessing an increase in geopolitical tensions and continuous challenges of multilateralism due to the gravity and intensity of open conflict, blatant violations of international law, and the continued widening trust deficits between states. Distinguished participants, friends, now there is a lot of talk about the rule of law, rules-based order, etc., etc. But the geopolitical tension, the conflicts, the incidents that are happening as we sit here gives rise to disillusionment amongst many countries, especially the global south. Indonesia is of the opinion that in this world of ours that's getting smaller and smaller, collaboration, cooperation, compromise, respect for the national interest, the core concerns of others are very important in pursuing peace, security, stability, and the prosperity. We are convinced that only dialogue and cooperation can be the effective tools for achieving these goals in our planet, which in reality has become smaller and smaller. Collaboration is the only way to achieve prosperity and harmony. Indonesia is firmly committed to deepening inclusive dialogue, concrete collaboration, as well as upholding international laws, especially respect for the national sovereignty of all states and the territorial integrity as enshrined in the United Nations Charter. Excellencies, the persistent conflicts around the world, most notably in Ukraine and Palestine, highlight the imperative for our continuous commitment to diplomatic dialogue and underscore the importance of international solidarity 
in our search for peaceful solutions. It is evident that without sustained and genuine global cooperation, achieving lasting peace in these regions will continue to be a formidable challenge. I wish to address the recent tragic events in Rafa, in Gaza, which have resulted in numerous innocent casualties, including children, women, and armed civilians. These heartbreaking incidents compel us to urgently call for comprehensive investigation into this humanitarian disaster. Understanding the full extent of this tragedy is crucial to preventing such incidents from happening again. We are very aware that the Palestine problem is a long and historical problem. We are cognizant of the fact that both sides have legitimate concerns for their safety, for their right to exist, and for their prosperity. We are also cognizant of the fact that the resolution of this crisis must consist of mutual respect for the rights and the concerns of all parties. There cannot be a single narrative that is legitimate As is often been repeated, Indonesia calls for a just solution to the problem, and that means the right of not only Israel to exist, but also the right of the Palestinian people to have their own homeland their own states, living in peace. I would like now to comment on the most recent development in the region. Why this is important for us? Because Indonesia is part of the Islamic world. Although physically we are not of the region, but what happens in the Middle East, what happens in Gaza affect the concern of the Indonesian people. Regarding the most recent development that we have just noted, that we have just uh, heard, that is, the most recent announcement by President Biden of the United States of America on comprehensive proposals for a ceasefire in Gaza. Although we have to further study the details of this proposal put forward and announced by President Biden, we do view this proposal as an important right step in the direction that we have to go. We view this as an important step forward. We are very pleased of news reports that representatives of Hamas has also voiced a positive response to these proposals. I would like also to express today Indonesia's commitment to support a comprehensive and permanent ceasefire as an important step 
towards a real and lasting solution towards real peace between Israel and Palestine and thus real peace in the region. It has been our conviction along with many other states in the world today that the only real solution to a lasting peace and security for both Israel and Palestine is a two-state solution. Indonesia supports all efforts and all measures that can fasten the progress towards that final two-state solution. In the meantime, we are prepared to do whatever we can to provide humanitarian assistance as well as when needed and when requested by the United Nations, we are prepared to contribute significant peacekeeping forces to maintain and monitor this prospective ceasefire, as well as providing protection and security to all parties and to all sides. We are also prepared to immediately send medical personnel to operate field hospital in Gaza with the consent and agreement of all sides. We are in discussions with our partners to expedite the deployment of these medical personnel. Indonesia also is very willing to evacuate and treat wounded Palestinian civilians and those needing hospital care in Indonesian hospitals. President Joko Widodo has instructed me to announce that we are ready to evacuate, to receive, and to treat with medical care up to 1,000 patients in the immediate future. This positive move towards a comprehensive peace, towards a permanent ceasefire, in the active and effective pursuit of a lasting solution to the present problem must be supported by the whole international community. Let us work together towards that goal. In the interest of all sides, we must do our best to achieve a real and lasting solution. One year ago, in the last Shangri-La Dialogue that I attended, I also proposed an immediate ceasefire, a cessation of hostilities in place in the Ukrainian situation. Since that time, many thousands more lives have been lost on both sides, including many, many innocent civilians. After one year, I'm still convinced that my proposal remains logical, relevant, and necessary. Necessary as an intermediate solution to this difficult, dangerous, one might even say potentially disastrous situation in the Ukraine. Yes, Indonesia is far from the region, but we view with deep sadness the humanitarian suffering, the geopolitical and economic ramifications that has impacted the whole world, and yes, has impacted our own region. And of course, let us, as citizens of this world, citizens of this smaller planet, never lose sight of the dangers of, of escalation, the dangers of miscalculation, 
the danger of not understanding your adversary, of underestimating his legitimate interests. We must always be aware of the danger of escalation and the nightmare of nuclear war. Once again, I would like to reiterate my call for both sides to rise to the challenge of seeking a peaceful compromise in Ukraine for the sake of the people of Ukraine, the people of Russia, the people of Europe, and the people of the whole world. I am convinced that real leaders will always opt for the best solution to protect their peoples. Ladies and gentlemen, in regard to our own region, the Indo-Pacific, especially Southeast Asia, we will always work towards collaboration, compromise, and cooperation. We call for restraint, patience, and caution to prevail amongst all the stakeholders in our region. Once again, we call upon the leaders of the great Chinese civilization, as well as the leaders of the United States and its Western allies, representing also the great Western civilization to rise to the great responsibilities in their leadership role as global powers. We, the nations of this world, depend and rely and demand the wisdom, the statesmanship, and the benevolence of the great powers. We are convinced that the leaders of the great powers can coexist with each other, can cooperate, can collaborate in the pursuit of the common good of humanity. Great power, with great power comes great responsibilities. Our world has become smaller. Science and technology has given us the opportunity to better the livelihood of our peoples. But also, without wisdom, without benevolence, without goodwill, science and technology can also quickly bring disaster and catastrophe to our world. Nationalism must be balanced by humanity. Patriotism must be tempered by wisdom and respect for all fellow citizens of the world. Let us work towards that common good. Thank you very much.